fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha. Conquer Outdoors. Bait Cloud. Bring the fish to you. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. wilderness lakes in south central Canada that were stocked with largemouth bass back in the 1960s and 70s. In many cases, these lakes are hard to get to. You have to use a four-wheel drive vehicle and in some cases, even an ATV. These lakes are usually smaller in size, they're warm water, and they have a lot of aquatic vegetation and also trees that have fallen into the water and stumps, which makes them ideal habitat for largemouth bass. I don't know if I can get him out. I got one. Oh, he's <laughs> yes. stealing my fish. I mean, you know what? It's worth coming into these back lakes to get these bass on top waters. And I love fishing the frogs because you can fish them real slow. Yep. That fish is about, I don't even think he's a pound. He's about maybe 11 okay. inches. Small guy again, that's okay. I'm trying to do the lift and drag, but they go down. We're not using like the big, you know, tournament bass rods. I imagine if you get like a four or five pounder, that's a little bit bigger than the other one. Yeah, nice and dark. You can tell the color of the water by the color of the fish. So even though this guy's in the lily pads, look how dark his back is. There and there he goes. In the summertime, along the shoreline and even out in open water, there usually is an abundance of frogs. Bass learn very quickly that if they sit in certain areas, either underneath very thick cover in the form of lily pads or near open pockets, when those frogs move from one location to another, they intercept them. This is the time that I like to use the storm weedless frog, and I fire it, making long cast right into the lily pads, and I retrieve it at a very steady pace. Sometimes I'll pause when I reach an open water pocket. Other times I'll go right through, over and across some of the heavier lily pads. I find that sometimes the fish hit it when it's moving, but a lot of times when it's sitting motionless. The storm frog is just the right size. It's about three inches long. It comes in a variety of colors, and it has living rubber legs. It gives it a lot of action even when it's standing still. What I like about the frog is that it's weighted with the weight underneath the body, very close to the back. So this aids when you're casting to make very long casts even into the wind. But when it hits the water, the frog always sits upright. So you don't have to worry about the hooks getting caught that are on top. The frog, by the way, comes equipped with double X strong tandem hooks that are on either side of the back. When a fish goes to grab it, the plastic collapses, enabling you to hook the fish. But when a fish doesn't grab it, the plastic body prevents vegetation to get caught along the hooks. So this is a really good way to fish weedless, even in the thickest cover, where you're trying to imitate real frogs that bass love to feed on. When you do get a fish come up for a plastic frog, I can't stress enough, the most important thing to remember is wait to set the hook. Most people get so excited when the water explodes 
that they try to set the hook, but the bass hasn't closed its mouth on the plastic frog. I find that you have to use a heavier line. Normally I use 40 or 50 pound braid with a bait casting outfit. And my strategy once a fish is hooked is to keep it up on top of the lily pads. If you let the bass swim down, it'll get your line caught all around the lily pads and it'll go down even into thicker aquatic vegetation that's growing off the bottom. Still, I wonder if that's one of the ones I saw come up earlier for something. Oh, man, this is where the big bass rods are important. This is a six and a half foot. It's actually a two piece bait caster. Okay. Oh, he's, I let off on the pressure. Sorry, Mulligan. Did didn't, yeah, right at the boat. I let off on the pressure. Can't do that. And he got <laughs> off. See if there's another, <laughs> another customer in there. For dedicated bass anglers, this is one of the most exciting times to fish because you can use a variety of topwater lures to catch your fish in very shallow water. Brad, did he hit hard? He hit hard. Okay, try to get him away from those lily pads, maybe to the left over here. I see him. Got him. Yep. You know what? He's probably going to jump in a second here. You be careful, okay? You've got three sharp trebles on there. Brad's got that Rapala waking minnow on. Yep. That's actually a nice bass. You got it? Okay, good. No hooks, right, in your finger? We got them. Good. Okay, now I've got the pliers right here, so if you hold them there, I want to make sure I don't hook you. Look at the size of that bait. You can see that it's almost like a, a five inch bait fish. And that bass, I'll bet you that bass will go about three and a quarter, three and a half pounds. It's a gorgeous largemouth. It's good. Nice dark colors. He's gonna say thank you, but bye now. You know, when you get into some of these back lakes, um, you've got a mixture of lily pads and weeds. And what we did was start by casting the plastic frogs right in the lilies. And now it's about one o'clock. We actually started fishing pretty well in the middle of the day because it took us a while to get in here. But what, because we're fishing now on the outside edge of these lily pads, we're actually throwing these wake minnows. And the waking minnow is ideal because you can have it wake right on the surface in the shallow water, but where it's about, you know, three to seven feet deep, you can actually crank it a little bit harder and it goes below the surface. And that's how Brad landed the first one. If the lakes are remote, there usually aren't any boat launches. So you have to have some kind of a portable boat, kayak, or canoe. On this week's adventure, we were fortunate to have a tetrapod, which is a trailer that actually transforms into a boat. We were able to put all of our gear, electric trolling motors, batteries, all our fishing gear and accessories inside the trailer. And once we got down close to the water, we took everything out and we transformed it into a boat, put our gear back in the boat, and we were off fishing. With the Tetrapod, you could use a small gas outboard, but we found that just using a 46 pound thrust electric trolling motor powered by one deep cycle battery has enough power to get us around the lake all day long. Nice fish. That's a good size one, Brad. Swing him over this way. Bring him around. Hang on to him. He's still got lots of energy. Sometimes I actually grab right onto the hook itself. The hook? Because see, if you try to grab him, that one treble is in his mouth. Okay, now I've got it clamped down. Nice large mouth. Beautiful back fish. Back nice. leg fish. Let me get him in the water. Nice bass. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Defend Products, eco-friendly protection from biting insects.
Sometimes I'll fish off the weeds where the water's still shallow. When I do that, I choose to use a lure that's a surface or subsurface lure. And the uh, Rapala waking minnow is an excellent lure to use for that. The waking minnow casts far, but because of its lip design, it doesn't dive down. So if you retrieve it slowly, it literally just makes a wake on the surface of the water. And if you crank it a little bit harder, it swims from side to side with a really nice side to side and wobbling action at the same time, only about two to three inches below the surface. This is perfect when you're fishing the water that's just off the lily pads or vegetation that's below the surface off of solid shorelines like rocky faces and so on. What were we just talking about these lures and you were asking me if they were out yet? You know what, they'll work everywhere too. Like our shallower, nice bass. Good jump. I'm glad it's pulling drag. And I know you got that drag tight. It's still from the <laughs> he wants frogs to go. that we used, yep. Either grab the lure or it's my, I don't know. That's it. Now what are you gonna do? <laughs> That's a nice bass. I love the He's colors, nice. eh? They're so dark here Three when you pounds. get into these northern lakes. It's nice. got a nice gold belly too, yep. He's gonna take off in a jiffy. Just watch those. They got pretty good teeth, eh? Yeah. What a hit, Brad. Whoa. Man, this thing is heavy. I can't believe it. I'm going to put this motor in reverse so it takes us away. Tell you what, what a workout with this rod. What a nice fish. We've been casting here to the lily pads. Brad had a big one on, I mean big. I thought it was four or five pounds. Is he gonna thrash? All right. I cast to one piece of wood. You can see a little piece of wood sticking out there. Look at that largemouth. Did he want that bait? I mean, that bait is almost five, six inches long and it almost is the width of its mouth. That is a gorgeous, this is what would be called a back lake, back lake largemouth. Beautiful fish. We don't have a tape measure or anything. I got a feeling this fish is definitely over six pounds. I would definitely say that. H have you seen a bass <laughs> that big? A large mouth? Look it, that is a gorgeous large mouth. Okay, I'm not gonna hold him out too long. I wanna get him back in. That is a handful. What a gorgeous large mouth. Mulligan, did you see the size of this fish? Look it, he's bigger than the span of my hand. You don't see my hand under there. Just gonna extend him out and Look at that, he he's in here for someone else to come in here and catch. We drove three and a half hours today to get to this back lake to do some heavy duty extreme fishing. With the tetrapod, you load all your gear up, close it up, fully enclosed, fully weatherproof. You drive down the road, get to the outdoors. Once you get back to that extreme back lake with our trailer, you get it close to the water's edge, you open it up, take all your gear out, and within less than a minute, you can flip it and you got yourself a boat. You turn it into a boat, six easy steps. First step is you open the trailer. Take all your gear out, put it off to the side. Second step, is to release the trailer and extend it out. Third step is taking the trailer, flipping the lid open, and laying it out into a boat. Your fourth step is two pins in the front. Those two pins that hold it on the trailer, you take those out, you release it from the trailer, those pins go back into the boat, locking the two halves of your boat together. Then your final step to release it from the trailer is one pin at the back. And then your last and final step is to back it into the water and go fishing. Our boat is made out of a high density polyethylene plastic, approximately three eighths thick all the way through. We have two versions of the trailer. We have our extreme duty off-road version, which is for the guys that want to go back to that hunt camp. And then we have what we call our urban on-road version. That's for that uh, person that's in the city, they want a nice small boat that they can tow behind their car. Our product's gonna be very customizable. From the fishing world, you can add swivel seats, you can add fishing rod holders, many different accessories you want to put into it. You can also turn it into a great hunting blind. It's for everybody, the hunter, the fisherman, all makes.
serious topwater bass fishermen that fish heavy cover with frogs and other topwater lures will use a seven foot rod, heavy action, almost like a flipping stick. In our case, we were actually using medium heavy outfits, the kind of outfits that you throw spinner baits and other lures, both spinning and in bait casting. And we did have 40 and 50 pound suffix 832 braid on them. The reason we're using that heavy line and using the stiffer rods is, number one, when a fish comes up, you have to respond pretty quickly, set the hook. Number two, you have to keep the pressure on, even if it's a big bass, that might be five, six, even seven pounds, and haul him out so he can't go around a fallen tree, a stump that's in the water, or vegetation that's in the water. It's one thing fishing those big top waters, but use these little guys. You know, both Br Takes Brad and I, because we've been getting so many fish, went to these little, they're called an ultralight popper. The thing is like an inch long. Now you can see how tiny that popper is. I'm gonna just lift this guy up. Hopefully he won't fall off. When you're casting along the shallow weeds, we know whether you're fishing on a more populated lake or you're fishing in a back lake like we are today, when you use a smaller popper like that in the middle of the day, sometimes fish that wouldn't hit a larger topwater lure will hit that little popper. So it's a very good idea to use it. For those of you that like to catch panfish and largemouth bass on the surface, whether it's a wilderness lake or maybe a heavy populated lake, a really fun way to catch them is to use an ultralight and to use an ultralight lure. Rapella has the ultralight pop, which is only about an inch long. It could resemble a grasshopper that's fallen into the water or a small frog or even a small fish going across the surface. So if you're using the ultralight pop, I usually try to cast it close to shore because that's where the insects and some of the smaller frogs will live and work it with a popping sound. So it's not really a lure that's designed to steadily bring in. You'll have to let it pause so that the front of it comes to the surface. Then you give it a jerk and it pops. It's like a version of the hula popper, which was a very old style popper. Sometimes even large fish will hit the ultralight pop. The most important thing is to pause in between your jerks. Largemouth bass, for those of you that may not know, are part of the sunfish family. That's one of the reasons why you can catch largemouth bass and sunfish in the same waters. They both like weeds, they both like obstructions that are in the water, like rocks and, and trees, stumps and so on. What's nice about largemouth bass and sunfish is that you can catch them right off the shore, from a dock, shoreline, pier, and so on. In fact, they're one of the best species to get kids into fishing with. All you need is a bobber and a worm, and you can just fish really close to shore and you'll probably get sunfish and largemouth bass. The Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry have a great program called Learn to Fish, where at designated provincial parks, they actually put on fishing clinics, they have a mobile trailer and even a sport fishing simulator so kids can get into fishing, practically by actually fishing in the parks, but also by getting good information and tips. Everything from the rods and reels to use, knots to tie, how to identify fish, and even a basic understanding of fishing regulations. So I would encourage you, if you know a young person that would qualify to go outdoors and that would enjoy fishing, check out the Learn to Fish program. They'll probably get hooked on fishing. Nice, you can actually get these fish right in the middle of the day. Trying to... Come on. Little bass, but that's okay. You can hear those rattles when they jump, eh? I've got heavy <laughs> enough line that I can just lift them up or I can just release them. <laughs> that's okay. We're just having fun. The frog certainly looks good.
for large boat bass fishermen that love to fish top water, you're probably familiar with a technique called walked dog. This is an artificial surface lure that when you cast it out and you start retrieving it and you start twitching your rod at the same time that you're retrieving your line, the lure has an action of going from side to side. I call it a zigzag. The classic term is walk the dog. Well, the Arashi topwater is one of the top lures to use for that, and we had a lot of action on it today. I find that the best strategy is that if you're fishing very calm water, you cast out the Arashi, and you use very subtle side-to-side -side action. Now, the Arashi has built-in rattles, so it actually makes a lot of noise. If there's a little bit of a chop on the water, I work it a lot quicker with a faster zigzag where you can actually hear with your ears, even at about 30 feet away, those rattles sounding at the same time that the Arashi is going from side to side. When you pause it, the Arashi actually, the tail goes down and half the body's in the water. So that gives the bass a really nice thing to aim at, a good target. And usually when a fish hits it, it's hooked really well. Even with the Arashi, though, it's important that if you hook a bass just off the weeds, that you try to get a fish to the top. The Arashis are equipped with three treble hooks. So if a, ho if a fish only has one hook in its mouth and is swimming around vegetation, there's a good chance that one or two of the other hooks are going to catch some of the weeds and you'll get hung up. And then the bass can actually maneuver itself and shake itself off the hooks. So always when you set the hook, make sure to get the fish on top and try to get it in as fast as you can. How many casts was that to the lily pads? <laughs> One. <laughs> this is awesome. Two men in a boat. <laughs> so I Two didn't men in a pod. I didn't ask you earlier. Are you having fun? I Brad? am. Nice large mouth. And this is the middle of the day. A lot of people say you got to get up early and all this stuff. Nice there large mouth. Yeah. Be nice to take home for dinner. No, nah, we're going to be releasing them all. Perfect. You're so careful with them. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Bait Cloud, bring the fish to you. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Now you gotta admit, this looks pretty lifelike if you look at this frog. The living rubber legs are really important when the frog stops because they fall down. The whole frog, when you're pulling it, actually it's horizontal in the water. When you stop it, the rear end falls down. That's why you get such good hook sets. And it's these living rubber that even if it's motionless, those living rubber legs still move a little bit. So what I've done here, I'm using actually 50 pound braid because if you don't hook a big bass, like a five, six pounder, you need to have the weight to pull them out of the lily pads. 